Ismay was a local collector and librarian. He lived about 10 minutes distance away from the gallery in a small terraced house where he amassed over his lifetime a collection of about 3,600 pots which he kept in that small house. Bill was so important because he was one of the most significant collectors of studio pottery in Britain in the 20th century. He was also important because of the way he supported artists and he supported studio pottery more widely. He never went to an exhibition without buying a pot, which is a fairly extraordinary thing to do. Ismay was so important for us because of course he was Wakefield born and raised and lived here all his life. So we really wanted to have an exhibition here that would give us an opportunity to show these wonderful collection of pots here where he collected them. We started working with Matt Derbyshire because we were looking for an artist that we thought could really help us think about how we can make this exhibition something different from a usual ceramics display. So we know that he's interested in the way objects are displayed, the way we encounter objects in our homes and our lives, and how his work makes us rethink those experiences. When we approached him about the collection, he was really enthusiastic as well and came up with lots of ideas. And we worked through maybe four or five before we got to the idea that we have currently to show Ismay's collection on the floor plan of his original house. So we managed to get the dimensions of the home that Ismay lived in for the whole of his life and we've recreated those exact dimensions here in the gallery. There are five key aspects to this work as a whole. The first is the floor plan, and that's the floor plan of Ismay's Wakefield Terraced House. The second aspect, and really important of course, are the pots themselves. So we've got about 700 pots on display here, and they just represent about a quarter of Ismay's total collection. The third aspect is the furniture. Some of the furniture here did belong to Ismay, and other parts of the furniture are pieces that we collected that are roughly approximate to stuff that Ismay had in his house. The fourth aspect of the install are the white goods that we have put in. So Matt Derbyshire chose to also incorporate these really shiny, modern, new, industrially made white goods. And they contrast in their man-made appearance and manufacture against these very handmade, handcrafted objects. And the final and fifth layer of the installation is the film. And that's a film that Matt Derbyshire made. It shows clips from movies, and lots of those movies about men becoming machines or that tension between man and machine, as well as very natural human movement in dance and hip-hop films. And really that's again about talking about the value of the human and about um, natural movement or the natural production of sound or artistry or dance against the man-made and how these two come together. And how at one time we thought that machines were the future of the world and that that was what we should look forward to. And that how this became overtaken by a fear of the machine. And so now we live in a kind of tension between all these things that we're used to that are made by machines and the value that we still place on the handmade and the artist and things that have taken a long time to make. I think the thing about this exhibition is that you will probably never ever see a display of ceramics shown like this in any gallery in the world ever again. It's an incredible opportunity to get an insight into a collector and to how he lived and collected, but also how that might affect or help us think about the world we live in today.